When I was a student, I ate whatever I wanted. <laughs> But after seven years of studying nutrition, I changed my mind. Did you know that we spent one twenty-fourth our lifetime for eight things? Do you spend it well? Does your body approve of what you eat or not? Have you any relatives coping with chronic diseases such as diabetes, obesity, hypertension, cardiovascular diseases, and cancer? Vietnam has six million of diabetic patients. Forty percent of adults has hypertension. One hundred and twenty-five thousand cancer cases are newly diagnosed each year. Have you ever wondered what causes these diseases? Do you know that these dangerous diseases have been proven to be related to lifestyle and diet? What did you eat this morning? Think about it. <laughs> A sandwich and another. Bread. A bread, yeah. Then, have you ever wondered? Have you ever asked? Whether your body loves your food, or whether your body was designed to digest and absorb that food. To answer that question, I would like to share with you a story. Once upon a time, about three million years ago, our ancestors were hunter-gatherers. Meaning that the main source of nutrition was meat, like chicken, rabbit, fish, and fruits. Then, one and a half million years ago, we learned to control fire. The fire made us the only species on Earth who was able to. Cook. At that time, we start to absorb the starch, like potatoes, rice, or wheat, because uncooked starch was unable to digest. Moreover, cooked proteins gave us much more nutrient and is safer than raw proteins. So. The fire has enormously changed the way we eat. Next, twenty thousand years ago, we domesticated agriculture. Starchy vegetables were more produced and became the main source of energy. Again, we create a big change in diet. Recently, 200 years ago, canned food was first invented in France. This has opened a whole epoch of food preservation technology. To date, we consume processed foods with high percentage of fat, salt, and additives. We are now able to organize the mass productions of food. This is a blessing, and also a curse. We can produce more food, but we are now eating things that never existed before. Food processing has enormously modified our diet. So, we have three great diet modifications. But 
one and a half million years since the first year of fire. Our genes don't have enough time to adapt to our diet modifications. It means that our body was not designed to consume modern food, to live a modern life. So, what's the difference? You need to compare our lifestyle to our ancestor one. In the past, our ancestors ate fruits and whole starchy vegetables. It means that there are enough fibers to harmonize blood sugar concentrations. Today, we consume well-processed starchy vegetables like white rice, white bread, without the husk or other shell, both of which contain fibers. It is not okay because it leads to more and more diabetes. Due to the amount of starchy vegetable in the modern diet, the ancient diet contained more proteins than the modern one. And now our ancestors are gatherers. They evidently ate fruits and vegetables. Now we have too many choices of tasty foods. We leave no space for vegetables. In the past, you can imagine that the sweetest thing on earth is honey, containing fibers, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. Now, can you guess the sweetest things on earth? Sugar, that carrying only glucose and fructose and that produce energy and nothing more. This is the reason why sugar raises blood glucose concentrations much more than honey. In the past, our ancestors need to run, swim, climb, and move to hunt and gather foods. How about us now? <laughs> How about us now? We just need to take three steps to reach the fridge. So you can see that the lack of physical efforts weakens our immune system and increases the risk of cardiovascular diseases, diabetes, hypertension, and cancer. You need to know that physical efforts can benefit our body by more releasing dopamine. This can sharpen your mind and strengthen your health against contaminations. Our ancestor woke up at sunrise and went to sleep at sunset. Their biological clock was perfect and depend on daylight. Today, due to artificial light, you stay up late, you do shift work, and travel in different time zones. Disruptions of biological rhythm can cause very bad consequences for health. Finally, we smoke, we drink alcohol, we, uh, we ingest the foods with high, high amount of preservative. These things never exist in nature. A long age, long age, we do that. Chronic disease can come as results. And the sedentary lifestyle with the support of modern machines blows up that risk of chronic disease. So you can see that the modern life, the modern foods are not suitable for our stone age body. So, we need to choose food carefully. Choose the things that we are designed to deal with. And how will we choose? I told you a story from the past, 
and I will share with you the story of the future. Our ancestor shows <laughs> our ancestor <laughs> shows food by instinct and by trial and error method without knowing anything about food composition. They pick a fruit by its appearance. They try it, then they decided to eat or not. Somebody, uh, several somebodies, may die after a wrong choice. <laughs> Today, science allows us to determine food content by biophysical chemical analysis. We have started to know what is inside food, whether they are harmful for humans or not, how much proteins, how much fiber. Food composition data have been collected by the USDA for most recognized edible things on Earth. By science and technology, we can now label edible foods to discriminate them from poisonous things. But have you ever wondered how a food or a functional food interact with our organs? Does it affect our DNA replications? Fortunately, medical and biological development has opened a whole new window to contemplate the reaction to molecular scales. Nutrition genomics is a new discipline that investigates the way in which nutrient molecules interact with our organs' molecules. The kinetic, how a certain nutrient could slow down cell aging. And the reason why such a huge amount of a safe nutrient could be harmful by entering DNA replications. These results helped and will help the WHO and National Health Ministry to complete the nationwide diet guidelines. And when you follow the guidelines, do you have a friend that is too much but never get fat? <laughs> yeah. Or do you have a friend who gets fat but despite eating fewer things? Yeah. Sure, I think sure. Because we are unique, decided by our unique DNA on Earth. So a food or a fruit could have various effects on different people due to their dissimilar DNA. Nutrition genetics is defined to work on the impact of our inherited genes on the correlation between diet and health. Nutrition genetics will answer these questions in the next few years. Overall, with the help of nutrition genomics and nutrition genetics, our future diet, meaning that uh, how we will choose foods, will be tailored to satisfy our unique DNA. For example, to prevent diabetes, your diet may be totally different from your neighbor's one. I would like to remind you that our body is unique, and it is not designed to consume modern foods to live a modern life. So, to minimize the effect of the modern lifestyle on our health, please keep a healthy lifestyle, which is first, avoiding smoking, drinking, and preservatives. Second, trying to consume more fruits and vegetables. Third, practicing physical efforts, physical exercise regularly. Yeah, regularly. <laughs> and the last one, 
keeping your biological lock lock stable. When it comes to food, don't just listen to your appetite. <laughs> Think of your body. Think about its approval. And never forget, our body is the holy conception of nature. Please respect it, listen to it, and never make it suffer from the modern lifestyle. So, do you remember your breakfast now? You can compare uh, the, your breakfast with my advice, then decide to eat it again or not. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>